Hello, my name is Adam, and in this video I will be going over how to make a one-third scale prepreg fiberglass nose cone for a subsonic rocket using 3D printed annealed PLA molds. The purpose of this video is to document the process and to develop my methods and techniques before moving to full-scale layups. Enjoy! Since these molds have been used in two previous layups, we begin by cleaning the surface with an abrasive pad such as a Scotch-Brite pad or similar. After all the bits have been cleaned off and removed, the molds are washed with soap and water and then allowed to dry. Using high temperature mold release wax, apply a thick layer and work the wax into the surface evenly. The molds should appear to dry and haze after about 5 minutes, at which time a microfiber cloth should be used to polish the entire surface. For a first time use of the molds, between 6 and 10 coats should be applied. Subsequent layouts, such as this one, should only require around 3 to 5 coats to return the surface to a shiny and smooth finish. Once the molds are ready, we can begin to prepare all our prepreg fiberglass cutouts using three different cutting templates. Cone number one, full length number two, and winged number three. Our design will require six layers at an alternating 90 degree and 45 degree weave pattern offset to maximize the layup strength. Using a sharpie to trace the templates, they can easily be cut with scissors along the lines to acquire all the needed shapes. Make sure to label each of the cutouts so you don't mix them up. The cutouts can be placed back in the freezer if you aren't ready to lay up yet. Before laying up the prepreg, we must prepare the wax cloth and vacuum bagging. For this layup, I decided I wanted to try a different method from the last time which should provide better vacuum pressure on the inside of the cone. The green wax cloth can be cut into a circle of radius slightly bigger than the full length of the nose cone. For this scale mold, the cotton batting did not fit well inside the cone with the cloth and bag, so I am unable to use it for this layup, but I may try to incorporate the idea into the full scale layup. Regardless, preparing the vacuum bag in a similar fashion to the green cloth, but making sure it can wrap around the outside of the mold as well, we require a long square shape. A more precise method is being developed for NGNC4. Starting with one of the molds, we begin with a 90 degree number one sheet as the first layer, which will be the outermost layer of the final assembled nose cone. Remove the white wax paper backing, fold the layer in half and place it into the mold so the aft edge is butted up against the inside mold edge. Try not to readjust or pull the layer back up after it has made contact. Removing the red plastic backing can be tricky, but try to remove it quick like a band-aid. Using an angled knife, trim the prepreg as parallel to the mold as possible. Using bunched up wax paper and avoiding using your fingers like I do, press any lifted edges or surfaces into the mold before applying the next layer. Once satisfied, apply the 45 degree number one sheet on top of the first layer using the same technique. Then do the same for the last 90 degree number one sheet. Then apply the single 45 degree number two sheet and trim it in the same fashion, but this time ensuring the farthest aft edge is trimmed flush with the mold end. To finish this mold, adhere the last 90 and 45 degree number 3 sheets together beforehand so that the 45 degree red plastic sheet is facing up. Then insert the two layer stack into the mold, trying to center the stack as close as possible. Clean the tip so the wing length goes to a height of about 0 at the tip, or about 1 inch of cutting on both sides with scissors. This mold is now ready for assembly, so it can be put aside while we prepare the second mold. To prepare the second mold, the first four layers are laid up the same way the first mold was. Adhering the last two layers together like before, a wax paper cutout is placed on both sides of the mold and the two layer stack inserted and centered so only the bottom adheres to the other layers. Once the bottom has been pressed into the other layers, roll the wings together to make a tube shape and remove the wax paper. Next, align both mold wings and bring them together. 
This took me a long time to get right, so be patient. Once they are together and neither of the sides are pinching as shown, screw the mold together and use a chopstick or tool to lightly press on the wings. Full compression will come later, so don't try too hard or you'll push or pull on the layers. Inserting the green cloth by bunching up the cloth into a rod-like shape, it should make it to the bottom of the mold. Now, tools can be used to press on the inside of the mold to better bond those wings together. The vacuum bag can be partially taped together beforehand to make setup easier, but eventually we want the vacuum bag inside the mold just like the green cloth, as well as around the outside. Once we have the edges of the bag sealed, we can apply a vacuum and continue to find and close leaks as necessary to acquire full vacuum. The vacuum assembly should be left for at least 24 hours to allow time for the epoxy soaked prepreg to begin to flow and to remove any air trapped between layers. Check the vacuum gauge periodically to make sure no leaks have appeared and fix them if applicable. Once the vacuum assembly has sat for a day, we can place it in the oven and follow the curing profile as closely as possible. A heavy baking sheet is placed below the assembly to minimize direct infrared radiation from the oven elements on the bottom. While we don't have our fancy programmable oven completed yet, this standard kitchen oven will have to do for now. The actual curing profile for this layup is shown on the right compared to the preferred profile on the left. This oven cannot control temperatures below 80 degrees Celsius, so the initial 4 hour dwell time is achieved by leaving the light on with the door closed. Although we never reach 50 degrees Celsius as we would like for the first preferred dwell temperature, the rest of the profile is similar and achievable with this oven. The cool down is achieved by turning the oven off and leaving the door closed for at least 4 hours while it tends to cool toward room temperature. After the assembly has cooled to around room temperature inside the oven, the vacuum can be turned off and the assembly removed from the oven. The vacuum hose can now also be removed. Cutting away the duct tape, the vacuum bag should come off easily, but the green cloth should be partially stuck to the inside of the cone. Our trusty chopstick can be used to carefully press in between the cloth and the inside of the fiberglass cone. Be careful not to damage anything after coming this far. Once enough cloth is separated from the cone, it can be slowly and continuously twisted so that the remaining cloth separates from the walls and it can be completely removed. If some fiberglass has cured to the top, like in this layup, the angled knife can once again be used to trim it flush with the mold. The mold can then be unscrewed and cracked open with a flat edge if necessary, but in this layup it just popped apart. Being careful with the sharp epoxy and glass fiber flash, the edges can be removed with a knife and sandpaper. Remembering to wear a filtered face mask or respirator to protect yourself from the dust, 120 grit sandpaper is used to flatten the edges and smooth out the excess bits all over the cone. When the nose cone shape is smoothed out, Clean the area with the vacuum and prepare the cone by applying blue painter's tape to the fuselage interface as shown. Using two part clear gap filling 10 minute epoxy or similar, apply modest amounts to the cone to completely cover the entire surface. Press epoxy into the cracks at the seams on both sides and at the tip. Once the, all the epoxy is applied, Use your fingers to ensure an even coating over the entire cone surface and in all the cracks. Place the cone upright and let stand for a few minutes. Once the epoxy on our chopstick becomes tacky and stringy, remove the blue painter's tape and place the cone back onto the stand. Leave the cone for at least 24 hours or until it's hard enough to sand. Since some gaps still appeared on the cone around the tip, 120 grit sandpaper was used to scuff up the area and a second coat of epoxy was then applied. The cone was then again left for 24 hours until hard enough to sand. This sanding jig I made isn't quite ready yet, but it will be ready for NGNC4, the next layup. I don't quite have all the hardware to make this work, but the concept works and I can move to a full scale design, which should also be able to sand these scale cones. 
For now, using the same tools we had last time, sanding can begin at 120 grit until the surface is even and all the shiny spots have disappeared. We can then go up incrementally until 600 grit. Try not to heat the cone up too much during sanding as the epoxy can ball up and ruin the finish. Because our cone requires bulkhead attachments, shear pins, and pressure ports in the full scale, it is shown here that this can be achieved with a 3D printed drill guide, which doubled as the cone chuck. Here are some notable improvements from the previous layups. Number one, flow throughout the layers was much better as the backing pressure was improved along the inside, as opposed to before when the cone was just stuffed with cotton. Number two, the wings near the tip weren't perfect, but they were significantly better than the last layup. The seams can be seen to be a lot closer and tighter. Number three, the new templates made it easier to streamline the prepreg cutting. As well, it made it easier to see where improvements could be made. Number four, removing the tape before the epoxy cured helped keep that bottom edge cleaner. Number five, the tips are getting better, but we are trying to remove the need for a tip insert, so better techniques for the layup will be needed. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the next layout video for the implementation of improved methods.